Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. I'm Ranj, the Bearded Flummer. Um, in this video, I will be going through my methodology of installing a new boiler. The reason why I replaced this Ramia Kalanta was because, as you can see, it's 0.9 bar on the pressure gauge and it was only topped up to 1.5 earlier that morning. The right hand manifold was leaking and the customer had come to the end of his wits and was like, I just want a new boiler, I don't want this anymore in my house. He moved in over about two years ago and since then he's had the left hand, left side hydro block replaced by Ramia and they came out and now the right side is doing it and he was just fed up and he was like, you know what, it's time for a new boiler. So obviously I was like, let's just put in a valent, you know, headache free, you know you're paying for quality and you know you're gonna get the best boiler. So I'm on this job right now, draining the water out of the system. And I've just marked up the flow and return pipes to make sure, as you can see, that they are crossed over and I wanted to make sure that they are piped up correctly but not obviously crossed over and I wanted to neaten up this uh, in a nice way to put it shit show and make it nice and neat for the customer obviously when you're fitting a valent um, it's not just the boiler that has to be quality the actual installation has to be of some sort of standard of quality as well so right now I'm just opening up the boiler draining it all down heating circuit has been drained and the, hence why I'm able to open up the flow and returns. The pipe hook was MLCP, so that's a multi-coated lined pipe I think. Um, but yeah, it's plastic, it's open ore with a aluminium barrier inside it. So it's really lovely pipe work, but anything above surface, I personally believe should be metal because it looks neater and looks nicer. And so I've cut it down right to the ground and I'm just right now converting it from plastic to steel using compression couplings. Um, and this way the pipe work will look neater and I like to go from plastic to metal using compression just in case in the future you ever want to make any alterations, adaptations by opening the compression joints up you are able to do so whereas if you were to actually use your press gun and crimp it all it's not going to be easy to alter unless you cut into the pipework must have a sip of tea and here's the boiler off the wall and yeah I work alone so therefore the only installations I do are the ones that are convenient for me I work by myself so therefore I risk assess everything now especially since I fell and obviously I injured myself and broke my ankles um, I make sure that I'm able to work safely and therefore any installation boiler installation I'm talking about I do will be 90% of the time on the ground floor or the first floor maximum. I will not go any higher than that. And obviously as you can see the pipework was all just, you know, hanging. So I've clipped it all to the wall and right now I've secured the gas. So the gas is the far left side pipe, which I'm working on right now. That is also yellow plastic, open or pipe. And because it's got a special fitting to go to metal, I didn't really alter that. I just straightened that up a little bit. And then from after the connection where I was able to, I've picked it up and gone copper. Removing the wall bracket right now off the Ramia Kalanta, measuring up from the flue, existing flue hole to where the bracket for the new Valent Ecotech has to go. So obviously level it up, mark it up. And yeah, you've just seen there my steel sends. Um, every time I forget to take my hammer in, but the steel sun does the job only to just knock a few raw plugs into the wall. That steel sun has been with me for almost 20 years now. And that's it. I use a ratchet. I don't drill. I don't use a uh, drill or a screwdriver like you know battery powered to tighten up the bolts that hold the plate to the wall because 
I don't want it to go free or cross thread or you know any issues that can happen I like to do it manually with my hand so that I can feel the tension for myself to make sure it's secure on the wall and here goes the Ecotech on the wall as you know I fit Ecotech Classics here in the Netherlands which is the Ecotech Pro in the UK the reason I choose the Ecotech Classic over the Plus is only because of the price and um, customers aren't really too bothered about the whole 1.1 1. 1 to 6 modulation compared to the 1 to 4 modulation that an Ecotech Classic does. They're more interested in just getting a boiler that does the job and a Valent Ecotech Classic in my eyes does a fantastic job. So I've just cut the condens away. And as you can see, I've neatened up the wall already. It's all tidy and a blank, well, a blank sheet really to start. And again, I'm Instagramming. So this is the cold water that I've isolated. Compression elbowed, and I'm gonna pick it up from there with new copper pipework. Just putting the unions on to the boiler that come with the boiler. working on the gas pipe right now so bend the gas pipe give it a 90 and yeah I only really bend 15 millimeter pipework I don't do 22 millimeter pipework that's just personal choice I'm too lazy to carry the big bender in so I always bend 15 millimeter but 22 mil I would just use 45s and 90s where where necessary and just press them together. So I always 90% of the time start with the gas. I like to get the gas out of the way and I always keep my little bucko span, um, sorry, bucko level on the side of my boiler just to keep it plumb and make sure it doesn't move around but yeah i always start with the gas pipe get that out the way and then carry our tightness test make sure it's all good once the gas is done then i work on the sanitary hot and cold pipe work and then on the flow and returns it's just the way i've always done it i work inside out when it comes to connecting the boiler up And this boiler was the CW5 version, which basically is a 35 or a 36 kilowatt boiler on the hot water side. And the CW5 version in this country, in the Netherlands, does not come with the built-in expansion vessel. So therefore the expansion vessel is just out the frame, above my head, above the door. And that's where the expansion vessel is. It's got an 18 litre expansion vessel. And I prefer that in these sort of circumstances because this system had 12 radiators and obviously a 10 litre expansion vessel just ain't gonna cut it on a 12 double radiator system therefore 18 litres is more than sufficient so the expansion vessel is just outside of the view of the frame This pipe that I'm working on now is the hot water pipe, so the gas is done. And now I am picking up on the new hot water pipe. I only fit a couple of clips per pipe. I don't do overkill. I think the regulation is meant to be about 1.5 on a vertical pipe. So anything between one to 1.5 meter is where I clip. So the only issue is when you do press fittings, you've got to plan 
strategically to get make sure that the joints are done in a schematical order otherwise your machine may not fit under the boiler or in the location to get it nice and tight so that's the hot done gas done now I'm doing the cold water I get asked a lot about what is this fitting that's on the top of my cold water pipe right now and that is basically called an inlet combination valve it's got an 8 bar pressure relief valve on it and it's got a um, check valve so a one way check valve a double check valve uh, to ensure there's no backflow and it's also got an isolation valve on it as well so it's got three components built into one valve I know we could use a shock arrester or a um, anti-hammer but here in the Netherlands this is just the norm that they use and you know when in Rome do as the Romans do basically but there have been instances where I haven't been able to get to a drain so if I haven't been able to get to a drain uh, for example on a electric hot water boiler like a cylinder system obviously that doesn't need a discharge but it still has an inlet combination valve required that's the only time I will actually fit a shock arrester or a mini expansion vessel to overcome the requirement for drains another question I get asked quite a bit is why do I do mix of metals it's not because I have a choice or I desire to do steel on heating systems and copper on the gas hot and cold that's just the way things are here in the Netherlands all the sanitary water and gas is done in copper or plastic and heating systems are normally done in steel and I prefer it this way firstly steel is so much more cheaper than copper and in my toolkit and my stock I have what I have so I just stick to it and uh, I carry all the fittings with me that I need to get the job done so hot is done cold is done gas is done and now I'm working on the heating systems return pipe and as you can see I'm fitting a normal what well, well to us what is normal um, a filling loop here in the Netherlands they like to use a three-quarter connection to uh, to allow a washing machine hose pipe to be attached to the heating circuit and then they use the nearby washing machine tap to fill the water up which I find really annoying because that means you got to make sure you isolate the washing machine take the washing machine hose off put your heating hose pipe on it fill it up and then before you leave make sure you've actually connected the washing machine back up and turned it on and made sure you checked for leaks that's just extra work so on all my installs um, I fit a proper filling loop yes it's a lot more expensive but my job as the bearded plumber is to not only provide people with the best service possible but also make their life easy make my own life easy because if for example the pressure is low I can just tell the customer oh you know the filling loop you see the flexible pipe that I fitted just turn the levers and the water pressure will increase rather than having to explain to them how they've got to remove the washing machine hose pipe off the tap connect this hose pipe that they might not even have nearby and get the system up and running so this is why I fit a, I fit a filling loop and on all my installations I always fit a Spyrotec filter on the return an MB3 I don't really fit the air separator on the flow because it's in my opinion it's not really needed as long as the boiler has air vents inside it it will do its job and this way it keeps the cost down for the customer but if the pipe work goes above the boiler and is surface run or run 
above the boiler and the radiators and there's no way of venting the pipework that's concealed above the boiler that's where I would definitely fit either the Spirotech air separator or just even a half inch automatic air vent on the flow to ensure that there is sufficient that the air can be the air can be relieved from the system easily. The Ecotec Classic in this country doesn't come with a PRV built inside it, so therefore I fitted the PRV on the return. Oh no, sorry, on the flow. That's the flow pipe going to the expansion vessel where I fit the PRV. System is back on, and here I'm doing my ritual of firing the boiler up for the first time live on Instagram for the Valent family. So that's all done. And now I'm just wiring up the BDR91 for the Evo home system. What's not in this video is me configuring the BDR91 with the Evo home system, but I did that as well at the end of the job. But there you go, all done. And now I've just got to commission the boiler. So yeah, if you uh, found this video helpful, on how to pipe up a boiler please leave comments below i would appreciate it and uh, if there's any room for improvement on my side to make the videos any more better for you guys please also leave them in the comments i will do my ever so best to make them better for you guys um also in the link also in the description below there's links for all the tools that i use if you are interested in anything have a look at them on amazon and until next time guys, live long and prosper. And I will see you in the next video, hopefully next week. And until then, I wish you all a great day. Thanks for watching. Over and out.